Um, hi everyone, I am Giz. Um, I'm a research fellow working on the Duchess study at the University of Potfisher. Uh, today I'm here with uh, Lisa, the um, co-applicant on the project who is the lead for Work Package 2, uh, the lead of Care Home Trials Repository, basically, and she'll be telling you more about it after my presentation. Um, just to give you some background on the Dutch study, uh, the four-year um, Dutch project launched in November 2019, just before the uh, pandemic hit. Um, it, it's funded by the National Institute for All Health Research, and it was formed by a collaboration of care home researchers, care home organizations and providers and NHS practitioners. Um, the primary purpose of DACHA is to establish a core data set, which we call minimum data set. And this data set will be based on resident level information, which are linked to routine data sources held by NHS and by local authorities. Um, this minimum data set, or MDS in short, uh, is for the use by care homes and it can ensure the collection of high quality routine data on residents. Um, and the concept of an MDS is well established internationally, but in the UK there is not a residence minimum data set at the moment. And we're trying to establish this uh, with the Dutch project. Um, in England, care homes collect and use data every day on the care needs of their residents and uh, for the care homes own regulatory purposes. However, this data is not organized in any specific uh, way or published. Uh, care homes might be filling in the records in paper and electronic formats because some of them uh, still only use paper-based forms. Uh, some are fully digitalized and some can use a mix of both. Um, in addition to the care home level data on residents, um, primary and secondary care organizations also hold a huge amount of data and collect huge amount of data on care home residents, although this data again is inaccessible to the staff providing care. Um, much of the data collected about care home residents focuses on health parameters and metrics uh, which respond to the needs of the NHS. So, a UK minimum data set, we argue uh, that it can contain more than health metrics and can potentially include social care measures such as ASCOT, um, the Adult Social Care Outcomes Toolkit, which has become a popular tool in the past years, uh, especially for measuring the social care related quality of life of the service users. Um, so Dacha arose out of the uh, R. Clark Care Net Home Network and is an ARC generated study. And these are the research partners of the Dacha projects, which include nine universities, uh, the National Care Forum and uh, the Health Foundation. And just to uh, briefly summarize the aims of Dacha in uh, two bullet, under two bullet point, points. Uh, we can say that the first aim is to create resources for care homes and care home researchers. And the second aim is to create a working minimum data set that can be used by different stakeholders. And we are aiming to build a pilot MDS that will work in fully digital care homes. Um, so how do Dutch researchers envisage the care home minimum data sets? What, what will the MDS look like? Um, we know that the MDS will contain resident and care home level data that different stakeholders agree is essential to plan, uh, provide and review care. Uh, this collated information at the moment is not available in the UK. Um, the minimum data set will complement NHS and local authority data about service and resource use. And uh, the MDS will provide a standardized tool for care home staff to deliver residence care. And as well as the local level, the MDS can also work at an aggregated macro level too, to provide uh, information on care home population in, uh, say, a specific borough, uh, geographical region, uh, and so on. Um, <clears throat> this is the timeline for our project. It looks uh, quite uh, confusing and extensive, I guess. So um, uh, as you can see, just if you focus on work package one, two, and three, uh, these three work packages have been completed in the first two years of the project. Uh, right now, um, we are focusing on work package four and work package five. 
um, it is important to recognize that uh, that all these work packages work in iterative ways and they all learn from each other. And having said that, um, here's where I am introducing you all the work packages. Um, work package one is um, it is start, the Dutch has started with work package one basically, and work package one looks at two separate reviews. Um, one of those reviews reviews the range and sensitivity of assessments and outcome measures using care home studies. No, and the second review reviews the process evaluations of care home randomized control trials mm -hmm. to understand implementation and to provide recommendations for implementing successful trials. Work package two um, consists of creating a trials repository of care home trials in the UK, which will be an ongoing growing database even after the Dutch uh, study finishes. Lisa will tell you more about this uh, uh, after I finish. And uh, work package three, um, we rolled out a national survey filled in by care homes to understand what information they collect on residents. And in addition to this, uh, work package three had uh, two evidence reviews. Um, uh, one of them talks about what context can create the best implementation of minimum data sets for utility in the UK. And the other one reviews the uses of MDS in international research studies. And work package four will be working with two integrated care system sites in England to identify residents in the existing NHS and local authority data sets. And finally, we'll be creating and piloting a working minimum data set as part of the final work package, work package five. Um, of course, the project is supported by regular PPI panels and residence panels and by consultation exercises, where we consult um, the expertise of a wide range of professionals nationally. And we finished uh, the first round of consultations in 2021 and the second round of consultations is due to begin um, early 2022. Um, to go over the work package findings briefly, the first review of work package one uh, tells us that a large range of assessments and outcome measures have been used in care home interventions. And um, we looked at 311 studies uh, in this review that reported interventions in care homes, including mainly RCTs. However, many outcome measurement tools have been used only once in these interventions, uh, as is evident in the graph here. Um, in addition to this, most intervention studies in care homes found no significant effects of the intervention, even when larger studies uh, were compared to the smaller ones. Uh, and there was no statistically significant differences between intervention and control groups in most studies. Um, and this is the second review of work package one. It is in press at the moment at uh, Age and Aging. It looks at the process evaluations in care home uh, interventions. Um, it reviews the processes and the necessities of successful implementation of trial interventions in care homes. Um, and we are producing a resource based on this review. You can see the um, cover of a leaflet that we are developing at the moment. And uh, it will provide key considerations for researchers and for care home teams for successful, in, in, um, successful interventions. Um, work package two. Uh, Lisa will be telling you more about this specific work package. Um, this is only a short introduction. And uh, the new trials archive named um, Virtual International care homes trials archive, VICTA for short, will be a new database of existing care home randomized control trials. Um, the virtual, virtual trials archive is a not for profit collaboration with data sets hosted by the University of Glasgow. And the archive is already home to three large databases, which you can see the logos of uh, here on this slide. Um, uh, these databases are of international cardiovascular trials, uh, stroke trials and renal transplant trials. So as with these archives uh, that already exist on the database, we believe that a care home trials um, archive can reduce research waste as well and provide comprehensive data to care home researchers who are interested in secondary data analysis. 
And as part of our package three, we look at the international MDS research studies between 2011 and 2021 and found out that the most common topics of MDS um, studies are healthcare related. As you can see in the graph on the right, um, health conditions and symptoms and healthcare in the home are the largest um, two of these categories. And yes, another evidence review from World Package 3. Uh, we looked at, um, we reviewed around 40 studies that offer the best learning for the utility of an MDS in the UK. 80% um, of these studies uh, were from North America because of the mandated use of a uh, minimum data sets in certain regions uh, of the USA and Canada. Uh, the review offers the learning on those conditions that can create a successful implementation of an MDS in care homes. Uh, we found that that training and legislating the use of minimum data sets uh, motivate care homes to complete the assessments. Um, and we named this a program theory um, as part of the traditional realist review. And another piece of evidence suggests that using digitally enabled systems needs certain skills and training uh, for the staff. And if the staff is proficient in using digital assessment tools and systems, then the accuracy and relevance of data will reflect residents' uh, experiences better. And again, World Package 3, uh, this is the last bit, uh, I promise. Um, as part of the national survey, we found out that there is a widespread use of tools in care homes. Across England, 273 respondents failed in the survey, which represents around 5,000 care homes nationally. Um, the respondents were from both nursing and residential care homes and the geographical spread was wide. Um, the survey shows that certain clinical measures and tools are in use in care homes. Uh, as you can see from the statistics on the left, uh, stool charts, charts, pain scales and water law represent a few of the most used tools in care homes. Yes, so we're package four. Um, our package four focuses on identifying data sources on care home residents that are held by um, health and social care systems in the two ICS regions. Uh, we have agreements in place with uh, Nottinghamshire ICS and the Surrey Heartlands ICS, uh, where we will identify information on residents uh, that are held in various systems within the same ICS. Uh, we will then link this data to the residents in care homes. So we're published for aims to demonstrate the benefit of routinely linking this data together. Um, just to give you a better idea about uh, work package four and five together. Um, the middle section shows what we'll be looking for within the ICS system. Um, and the et cetera part at the, at the bottom, it depends on the range of data available in the ICS region, which we will only determine once the service evaluation uh, of work, work package four begins. Uh, work package four, is designed to inform our package five directly and uh, to produce a prioritized list of variables for a care home minimum data set. And our package five, um, before generating a prototype MDS, the Dutcher team uh, has been collaborating with the Care Software Providers Association, CASPA in short. Um, we have attracted interest from several software providers that work with, work with care homes that provide services like software services to care homes. Um, through this collaboration, we will analyze the data fields and parameters from the data provided by care home software providers. And this will enable us to see the range of data um, that are collected in care homes, what are offered to care homes in the first place uh, in the default version of the softwares. And this will inform the variables that will go into the Dutch prototype. Um, when the prototype is created, uh, we will take this tool to 40 designated care homes across the Nottinghamshire and Surrey Heartlands ICS sites, and the MDS will be piloted for 12 months. And Dutch researchers will collect data fields from these um, designated care homes at three intervals, at the baseline, at six months, and at 12 months. After each wave of data collection, uh, we will give participating homes uh, from each cohort the aggregated summaries of their MDS data. 
Uh, this will include administrative data, uh, administrative comparisons, uh, such as MDS completion rates, and also some measures of residence health. Um, the staff who are trained in the completion of MDS um, will also be interviewed during Work Package 5 uh, to explore if there are any implementation issues in the pilot, how they can be fixed, and uh, if the MDS need any potential modifications in the meantime. And I think this is all from me today. Um, I hope that I provided you with a brief overview of this very uh, extensive project. Um, and I am now passing it over to Lisa, who will be giving you more details on specifically uh, about work package to the Care Home Trials Archive. Thank you. Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about Work Package 2 and our plans to create an archive of individual participant data for trials conducted in UK care homes. I'm working closely with colleagues at the University of Glasgow in particular the Virtual Trials Archive, which we've based this model on. So I'll begin by talking about how Work Package 2 fits with the rest of that chef. I'll then outline problems around information sources from care home research and the opportunities available when working with data collected in trials themselves. I'll go through what our plans are with the Virtual International Care Home Trials Archive, or VITCHTA for short, and I'll update where we are at. I'll finish by briefly talking about the next steps for the archive. So here's the DATCHA structure that is described in the last presentation, and here is Work Package 2, which I'm leading with Jenny Burton, who's a ger geriatrician in Glasgow. The overarching aim of DATCHA is to make better use of existing data in order to learn more about care homes and the residents. Work Package 2, the aim is more narrowed and we are looking to make better use of existing trial data. So we have links with Work Package 1 as we're interested in existing trials and outcome measures collected in these trials. We hope to inform the consultation events and also the type of data that would be collected in the protocol minimum data set. But it's worth noting that the data collected in the trials archive would need to be included in the minimum data set itself as this is pre-existing research data and the MDS will use ongoing um, administrative data, probably hopefully collected in real time. We've known for a long time about the lack of reliable data we have on care homes, but COVID-19 really highlighted the issue. We need to remember that care homes are mostly private entities and there just isn't the same joined up systems in place like they have for the NHS. RCTs collect high quality, detailed information about every care home and every resident they recruit. They monitor participants regularly, usually for up to a year, when care home interventions cover a variety of health areas, there's lots of overlap in outcome measures used and information collected on both residents and care home structure. Individually, the trials are valuable, but given that they collect very similar information about the same demographic group, if we combined individual participant data from trials, we'd have a bigger data set with more statistical power to repurpose and answer additional research questions. Build IPD can be used for exploratory analysis to better understand the population, refine future research questions and inform clinical design. It's low risk, low cost strategy that makes better use of existing trial data. So what kind of data do care home trials tend to collect? Well, for the purposes of the trials archive, we aren't really interested in the interventions or the treatment effects. But because we aren't focused on a particular intervention type or disease, we have flexibility to include lots of different clinical areas, which means we have a wide range of outcome measures. Some measures might be very specific to one trial, but lots are commonly reported and we will pool what we can. So in terms of inclusion criteria, we're keeping it pretty broad. We're looking for any RCT conducted in a UK care home published since 2010. In addition to the trial data set, we'll request important study documentation like the protocol, data dictionary, case report forms, basically anything that will help us preparing data for pooling. We'll also need evidence of participant consent or assent. So how it all works, um, we searched funding award pages and trial registries for published and ongoing trials being conducted in UK care homes. Then we reach out to the principal investigator and ask them if they want to be involved. Instead of being fully open access, we have a managed access model. So the trialists themselves act as gatekeepers for their respective data sets. Once the trial data has been pooled and available for analysis, external researchers request access to the pooled trial data. The Trial Steering Committee will oversee the proposals and how the trial data will be used. They have three options. Most commonly, they would agree for it to be used and not get involved. 
but they could also object to the proposal, in which case their trial data would be excluded. But if they really like the research, they also have the opportunity to get actively involved in the new research. Before any of the research is submitted, the trial committee will be able to see uh, the paper and they are also recognised in the publication, uh, usually on behalf of the VICTA um, collaboration, but also if they have contributed, then it could be the authors. As new trials are added, new trialists join the committee, so this will expand over the years. So Dacia Work Package 2 is somewhat seed funding because the real benefits will come afterwards. We are establishing a long-term long resource and to ensure that the resource can exist beyond Dacia, we are replicating the methods of the Virtual Trials Archive at the University of Glasgow. They have three very similar archives and have been pooling trials related to stroke way back since 2002. Once Dacia is finished, the Care Home Repository will formally migrate into the VTA and that will be its permanent home. All, all the archives have acronym Virtual International Something Trials Archive, so that's why we're calling it VICTA for care homes. All trial data is sent to the VTA directly and will remain on the Glasgow server. Any analysis will be completed on their online data platform. External researchers send proposals via the VTA website to access its data and the VTA manages the data requests and then the trial steering committee will continue, continue to oversee them. Pooled individual participant data will be made available to other research teams in user-friendly data sets tailored to their explicit research question. Research question. So to visualise, we're currently in the development phase, which is part of the DATCHA project, and post-2023, it'll be the operational phase managed by the Virtual Trials Archive. We invite trialists to join and send them the protocol and all the relevant information. If they want to take part, trialists get in touch with their sponsor's office, who negotiate the terms of the contract. We have a template data sharing agreement, which was based on the VTA standard contract, and generally any tweaks have been pretty minor. Once the DSA is signed, the data manager, which is generally in the trials, you know, clinical trials unit, would need to prepare the data set by ensuring all resident and care home details are fully depersonalised and that only completely anonymised data will be held in the repository. The CTU data manager transfers data to the VTA. I have a secure login from Hertfordshire to process the data and pool with other trials and complete the DATCHA analysis. Post DATCHA, which is the end of 2023, you can see the bottom right of the diagram here. The, the repository formally migrates to VTA. External researchers submit requests to the VTA. The VTA will circulate the proposal to trialists for approval, and the data remains on the VTA server and analysed on their data platform. All publications will include the on behalf of VTA byline. So that's how it works in theory, and now I'll briefly update on how it's gone in reality. We started in January 2020 and spent several months developing the protocol, getting ethics and data protection documents sorted. Because this is secondary data, we're fully anonymised before we receive it, so the ethics was pretty straightforward, and we've got university ethics, not HRA. We did a lot of groundwork pre-funding, so we approached PIs from some of the largest UK trials and a provisional agreement from five. So by July 2020, we were able to have our first trialist meeting and shortly afterwards, we circulated the data sharing agreement to be signed by respective sponsors during the summer months. This was all going great and by October, we had our first contract and by December, our first data set was transferred. In the background, we were ironing out some contracts issues between Hertfordshire and Glasgow. We'd always planned to use the data sharing template used by the other three VTA archives which is a contract between the trial sponsor and the University of Glasgow alone. But since Hertfordshire is the lead organisation for DATCHA, after much toing and froing, it was agreed that the safest approach would be to include Hearts as a co-signatory on all the data sharing agreements. This meant working with the legal teams in Hearts and Glasgow, and this added layer of red tape slowed us down a bit. We took several, several months months to get the amendments signed off, and then we had to go back to the original trialists and sponsors again, including those who had already signed. We're getting back on track now, but it was a bit frustrating, and in hindsight, we may have jumped the gun a bit with sending the DSA so early. But this is the first time the Virtual Trials Archive have partnered with another university, and the development then operationalize framework is novel. So as of November 21, we have five contracts signed and two data sets so a quick summary of the trials we have signed data sharing agreements on. 
got 4,600 residents across 250 care homes, two from quite a long time ago in 2011, and one in 2016, 2017, 10, 2018. We're in discussions with other trials which ran between these dates. So with the time period from 2011 onwards, we do have the potential for longitudinal analysis. And we could look at how have care homes changed in that period? What about the residents' baseline, like their quality of life or frailty? They're all big studies. The combined research cost was 9.2 million when adjusted to 2020 prices. All are funded by the NHR so far, but we're in talks with trials from different funders including some trials focused on COVID prevention and treatments. There's, uh, the sponsors are a mix of universities and NHS trusts. Often data is held in different organisations, for example, if the CTU is at a different university. So it does take time to build relationships with multiple partners. Um, so far, the data is mostly in England, but we've got some from Scotland and some from Northern Ireland. Uh, we've got outcome measures. The primary outcome is in bold. So we have the potential to pool from these five, uh, EQ5D, Bartel, MMSE, and lots of falls data. So I've worked with each of the clinical trials units to check what variables they have and what should be removed or converted before they're sent to Glasgow. For example, date of birth should be removed, but converted to age of randomization. I'm starting to look at the data we've received and check that we have everything we need, what format it's in, how best to link data tables, just sense check name, name, number ranges, that kind of thing. If there are any discrepancies, I'll go back to the published monographs and if necessary, check with the study statistician or the PI. I'll then begin standardizing variable names and making sure any categorical variables are coded in the same way so that they can be pooled. By the end of DATCHA, there will be a master code book which can be consulted by new researchers when they access the pooled data. The first use for pooled data is to create a very simple summary of what variables we have available and the sample sizes for each. We want to tie this in with the prototype minimum data set to see which of the variables match up. We already have 4,500 residents and we can probably get double this by the end of DATCHA. I'm interested in looking at how representative Fichta data is compared to other care homes and their residents. Um, is there a bias in always recruiting from research-ready homes? Can we compare point, est point estimates from other sources, such as CQC monthly reports? Um, I think it should be fairly simple to compare the care homes themselves, but finding administrative data on residents might be trickier. So I'll just end with a few ways I think Fichta dataset could be used focusing on care homes, but also based on the sort of research that has already been generated from the other archives managed by Glasgow, most notably the Stroke Archive Vista. Lots of potential work are around identifying subgroups of residents, such as high versus low dependency, small groups um, with recurring hospital admissions, or what happens to the resident before or after a major event, like a fall. Methodological work around mapping and crosswalks for outcome measures, particularly quality of life, there's also data harmonization or imputing missing data. There's information about workforce and funding status and how it varies from home to home. And all this can be linked back to resident outcomes. We have a strong PPI team and panel for DATCHA. And since we've started, I'm developing an interest in resident and care home staff priorities and what kind of questions they might like us to look at and could be answered using the archive. Once it's set, set up, it'll be a significant resource but it's only really going to succeed if people know about it and use it. So I encourage you all to keep us in mind if you have questions about care homes that could be answered with existing trial data. So thanks for listening. Um, we went through quite a lot there, but if you want to know more about um, our, our protocol is published in BMC Trials, and also there's updates on the Dutch website, and please feel free to email me. Thanks very much.